Hello, and welcome to Dementia Unplugged. This is Janine Forrest, and I am so happy that you've taken the time to join me in this discussion on hygiene made easier. But first, a word from our president of the Dementia Society of America. Welcome. Please listen to this important message from the Dementia Society of America. All content, including any potential medical information, is provided as an informational resource only and is not to be used or relied on for any diagnostic or treatment process. It should not be used as a substitute for professional diagnosis, care, and treatment. Please consult your health care provider before making any health care decisions or for guidance about a specific medical condition. The opinions expressed and the content shared by Dr. Forrest are not necessarily the opinions and content of the Dementia Society of America. Thank you. Again, thanks to all of you for joining me uh, today to talk about hygiene made easier. As we begin all of the uh, different webcasts, I'd like to have sort of a common language when we talk about this concept called the dementia. Uh, just to be clear, the word dementia is really an umbrella term that represents many, many different types of diseases and conditions. Um, and there are over 100 different types of dementia-like expressions. The most common are Alzheimer's disease, vascular dementia, Lewy body, and frontal te uh, temporal dementia, and there are many, many more. But that said, when we're talking about hygiene um, and some of the frustrations and challenges, this is a topic that is applicable to all of these conditions. All right, so let's get started here. I hear from so many people about some of the uh, just difficulty they have in understanding why a loved one perhaps no longer wants to take a shower on a regular basis or wash up or take a bath when it has seemed just part of one's daily routine. And as a family care provider myself, and as the sort of professional care consultant, um, this is a very um, common, but not, uh, uh, not a problem that can't be uh, sort of worked with. There's guidelines that I'm gonna share with you, some helpful hints. Um, I've worked with people who, have come to me and their loved one hasn't taken a shower for maybe a year. So this is a frustration uh, that perhaps some of you have, um, are experiencing on the call. I, I want to thank you to those of you who did send in questions in advance and I will address those specifically. The way these webcasts work is that I'm going to talk for about 30 minutes and then there'll be 15 minutes of, of question and answer. Uh, if you have specifics. I want to start by saying, in order to understand even the concept of making hygiene easier, it's important to recognize that there are underlying brain changes that help to explain um, what you're experiencing. And the parts of the brain, particularly the frontal lobe, the one right behind the forehead, um, is responsible for things like taking in initiative, sequencing, being aware that one needs to be bathed or that there needs to be hygiene to be done. Another part of the brain, the hippocampus, that is responsible for memory starts to to change, particularly in the Alzheimer's related dementia. And one may think that uh, they've already had a, a shower earlier today when it was perhaps a couple days ago. So there, there are, are real 
uh, changes in the brain that are taking place that we don't see. And this adds to some of, of, of the frustration. Um, but for the callers or the listeners on, the, on, the, on this web class, please understand that the loved one or the patient or the resident you are caring for, this is not something they're doing just to give you a hard time. There really is a change and an inability to, to understand what to do next, how to sequence a shower. Um, there's even changes in the ability to smell in, in some uh, particular dementias. And so there, be, there can be an unawareness of, of, of odors um, that are coming from the body. So sometimes if you keep this perspective in mind, it really does help. Um, so just to reiterate, there are brain changes that explain why this is happening. What we can do as care providers, care partners, is to change our approach and in some uh, respects, sometimes the environment. And that's what I'll be focusing on today. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a cure um, for many of these types of underlying conditions. So the goal here is to take sort of an inside out perspective. This is a picture of the Magritte uh, eye looking inward. And our job is to think what life might feel, uh, look like, uh, be experienced by our loved ones and patients and residents with this type of condition. So let's start there. First of all, I'm going to say that it's never helpful to argue or try to convince someone with a dementia that they need to take a shower, that they need to wash and brush their teeth. This lack of insight and self-awareness is unfortunately just part of the disease. And you can spend a lot of time and energy trying to convince someone and in many aspects, you will probably never win that argument um, because working with logic and reasoning is not the dance, I like to say, uh, that is going to help us glide across the ballroom. Um, there's other ways to work around this. So let's see what else you can do besides trying to argue and convince. Start with a flexible attitude and tone of voice. So the flexibility here, I have someone bending over. Uh, no, that's not part of it. Uh, you really don't have to do a, a backward bend here. But the image is, um, you have to think about this whole concept of hygiene a little bit differently, a little more flexibly. And it could be, first of all, that um, you'll understand that many older adults perhaps didn't take a shower every day. It wasn't part of their usual routine. And so flexibility is going to come in the shape and size of the, the type of, of hygiene and how we approach it. So one day it may be washing up, another day it may be a shower. For some, if uh, there's a physical ability and the limberness, it could be taking a tub bath. It doesn't always have to be the same all the time. The other part is your attitude. Um, keeping an upbeat, positive attitude is the way to go. Not always easy, but your sense of encouragement and sense that this is just, you know, I'm going to work with you, we're going to be just fine, uh, let's do this together, is one that, that works quite well in many circumstances. The other part is your tone of voice. Um, that is a clue, that is a deep uh, way to connect with people. And if you have a sense of frustration and anger and resentment, during this sometimes, you know, quite intimate experience of, of hygiene and showering, 
that, that's going to be an automatic turnoff. So taking care of yourself so that you have the energy in order to help guide someone through this experience is just as important. So your flexibility, attitude, and tone of voice is part of making hygiene easier. In this next slide, I say words matter. So sometimes just hearing the word shower uh, can be an automatic uh, turnoff for some people within their dementias. And so what's worked for me and for other people that I've coached is to use language such as, let's have a wash up or a cleanup. Here's one. Let's say, let's get ready for a date. Uh, let's get ready. The, the grandkids are coming over to visit and wow, let's just get all spiffy and ready for their visit. Now, if you're a baby boomer like myself, and if I were to de develop a dementia, it would be helpful to say, Jeannie, you're going to the spa. Um, so language does matter. It, it, there's a whole different connotation involved uh, based upon your words, and often they're more encouraging along with your tone of voice. So I alluded to this concept of frequency and type. Think about it, when you were growing up, did you shower every day? In my own experience, it was a bath night every Saturday, right before Sunday. And this may be something that particularly older adults are reverting to. So in their mind, it makes no sense to take a bath every day or a shower every day. Uh, people do time travel. Their, their long-term memories stay intact for longer periods of time. So the idea of showering every day just doesn't make any sense to someone in their dementia state. So it may be that you have someone sit in front of the sink and they wash the most vital parts, right? Under our arms, groin, uh, face, hands, and that's good. And maybe we're shooting for a shower once a week. Tubs, um, uh, if that's what people are capable of, and if we're dealing with uh, safety issues, that may not always make sense. But uh, we could always use a tub chair uh, to accommodate that. So the place where people get washed up uh, is something to, to think about and to be flexible about. Other helpful, useful approaches that have, have worked for me um, <clears throat> and other families that I do work with. So here's some things to keep in mind. Keep the room warm. Don't start out with a, with a cold room, especially with our older adults with less uh, what we call added post tissue or fat. They're more prone to being chilly. Avoid clutter. When a place is over, you know, there's, it's just sensory overload, too much stuff in it, that can be an automatic sort of um, distortion and, and, and a sense of distraction for people with dementia. I often see this when I go into various care communities. Not only is the shower area used for showers, but it can be used for storage. Um, I've seen wheelchairs in there, Hoyer lifts, you name it. And it looks pretty much like a storage closet. And that can be sometimes frightening um, for people in their dementia, especially as what we call visual spatial uh, recognition starts to change. So the ability to recognize objects and what they are for uh, can play into this. And if there's a lot of stuff and equipment, that can be very, very scary. I do say that if it's necessary, use a shower chair or a handheld shower hose as a way to manipulate uh, the water. Um, I'll go to another point here. 
Uh, what I find that works best is if we are in a shower to start with the legs and the feet first. That's not always intuitive, but it's much less threatening than starting with the face. The face and the hair, um, often that can be startling, scary, and once you get someone stressed and agitated because of that, the game's over. Don't try getting through a shower quickly when someone is upset. Uh, that only makes it worse. So what I've uh, done is I've uh, helped family members or, or people I've cared for start with the feet and the legs. They're able to acclimate to the temperature. And I've moved upward, you know, up the legs up to the groin area, up to the chest, and use the hair and last, uh, the hair and the, and the face last. Sometimes uh, that may be even a separate uh, time, uh, depending on how someone is uh, experiencing the shower at that point. Uh, the other part that's worked for me, especially if temperature is an issue, is that I've covered people with great big bath towels and kept that on during the shower. So you're basically sort of washing underneath and being soaked and uh, keeping this towel on keeps them from having any exposure to uh, cool air. I've played soothing music in the background uh, to make it more spa-like. Um, I've sang to people as a, as a form of distraction during the shower and actually getting to. Um, in some care facilities, they have what's called shower chairs and what doesn't work is to wheel someone in the shower chair um, all the way to the shower. It often can cause some distress. So if someone is mobile, I have waltzed people into the shower area singing let me call you sweetheart or you are my sunshine and made it a fun experience uh, it's again using the technique of attitude and encouragement talking calmly in short words giving a uh, cueing in short phrases uh, when i find myself having to explain uh, that often makes it uh, a lot less um, comforting uh, for the person with dementia. I've cued people instead of saying, here, wash your face. I've taken the washcloth and cued and, and looked like I was washing my face at the same time. So when words become more confusing, cue people. That means modeling. Encourage the person you're working with to help. Um, it is a real sense, or can be a sense of invasion and privacy um, if you automatically take over. For those of you who are listening, who are perhaps professional caregivers, what I want to tell you, it is essential to build a relationship first in trust. It would be as if I'm knocking on your door this morning, you open up the door, I say hello and start saying, okay, time to get undressed and time for your shower. Um, I would hope you would get distressed and challenged and perhaps want to fend me off. It would make no sense to you to have this complete stranger come to you and start taking off your clothes and performing this, this intimate kind of exercise here of, of showering or bathing. So think about it in those terms, from that person's perspective. They have to trust you first, that you're a safe, kind person willing to help, no matter how long and how many months you've cared for this person. If memory is severely impaired, they won't remember from day to day. And so you have to reintroduce um, yourself and reestablish trust on a daily basis. Another piece that works is complimenting frequently. Thank you so much for your help. You're doing great. 
wow, you know, you know, look how shiny your hair is. Compliments are another strategy in helping hygiene to be made easier. The next slide talks about the under the towel wash up. So uh, this can be done in a shower or even um, I've had people on, uh, in a chair, on a commode, on the toilet. The whole idea is if, if being exposed to any type of air uh, with, a, with their skin is distressing, then I've kept people under multiple towels as I've wash them. Um, another strategy is to use non-rinse soap if that's an option, if, uh, if soap is too stressful, or non-rinse shampoo. Another part of hygiene you don't want to think about is, or, or don't want to <laughs> not think about, is oral hygiene. This is an essential part um, oral care. And often it's the one that's neg neglected. And there's research that indicates that poor oral hygiene has a direct link to various oral infections, cavities, pain, uh, pneumonias, heart disease. Uh, poor oral hygiene, um, as a matter of fact, is linked to um, spikes in blood glucose and so diabetes, believe it or not, is better controlled with uh, better oral hygiene. So just a few thoughts on what has worked uh, and, and, and made it a little easier. Allow the person to be as independent as possible with the toothbrush. Uh, they may not recognize what a toothbrush is for. And so just saying, okay, it's time to brush your teeth, that may not be sufficient. So you may have to cue them and put that in their hand and then start modeling what brushing teeth looks like. And that may be the only thing you have to do. What has also helped is using a soft uh, children's sized toothbrush in order to get to the different parts of, of the mouth. With a large toothbrush, a hard one, it could be too um, distressing for the person with dementia. An important piece to remember, it's not about the amount of toothpaste. Toothbrushing is about the brushing. It's all about the brushing. As a matter of fact, toothpaste just needs to be a pea size to avoid any of that extra foam, or you may not need toothpaste altogether. Um, I wash Water works fine. Um, unsweetened pineapple juice is another way of, of doing oral care. It's pleasant to taste, and we don't have to worry so much about swallowing. Or you can use flavored toothpaste um, in, in the children's section, but just a small amount, especially if swallowing and choking becomes an issue towards later stages. As we move towards later stage, it's still important in final stages to uh, perform and assist with oral care. And this is where um, oral, uh, those tooth actually look like green sponges can be used, um, just sort of moistened with the pineapple juice. I would encourage you to avoid the lemon glycerin swabs. They can often uh, be very drying in the mouth and saliva um, becomes less produced, especially with a variety of medications, and as someone ages. So uh, just moisten the mouth frequently, swab the mouth with a sponge, um, and like I said, unsweetened pineapple juice is one that seems to have worked well with some of my um, care uh, clients that, and families that, that I coach. So that's just a, a few ideas of how to um, make hygiene a, a little more easy uh, for you as the care partner, a little less distressing uh, for the person with the dementia. The whole idea is to make this a pleasant experience as possible. 
especially because some of this is done every day. All of this, all of these ideas and podcasts are about learning how to care, especially now before we are finding the cure or cures. If after our uh, discussion today, you have any uh, specific questions and like to talk more one-to-one, -one, I am available for consultation. Uh, you can look at my website, which is called Through the Forest, which is a takeoff on my last name. That's www.throughtheforestwith2rs.com or call me at 773-704-1834. I do want to thank the Dementia Society of America for hosting these webcasts. It's um, a wonderful volunteer-led organization with a lot of different resources made available. And um, I learned that these uh, podcasts will be moving towards YouTube or moving on YouTube as another way of, of, of um, accessing this information. Um, especially for others who cannot make the web live cat web uh, <laughs> live webcasts. Okay, <laughs> that's why it's called live. All right, I'm going to move on to the question area now, and during this time, I am going to uh, disconnect uh, the recording button so it could add to your privacy. <laughs> 